tonight only on 12 news at 10. Kids and guns. What happens when children find firearms in a room filled with toys? And there's guns. That's tonight at 10. From the Valley's number 119, 12 News. Welcome everyone to 12 News on Facebook Live. I'm Tram Mai. Tonight we want to talk about kids and gun safety. Take a look at this alarming scenario. Kids playing with guns. Kids are kids. They're going to do what they want to do. This isn't your typical gun safety program. What we have done is we've placed three decommissioned firearms in a lifelike situation at home. The guns are hidden in a purse, a backpack, and a nondescript box, then placed around nearby toys. Cameras are hidden inside the room. So there's a gun here. Parents know their kids are about to be tested. They'll watch nearby to see if their children do as they've been taught and follow proper procedure. Stop. Don't touch run and tell an adult. It doesn't take long for this brother and sister to find a gun. One misstep and, and, and then, you know, we have them in our ER. And now I've got David Laird, a safety instructor at Caswell's Shooting Range, joining with me right now. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. You know, I was alarmed to read this statistic that eight children are accidentally shot every day with unsecured firearms in the home. I know you had said that you have six kids. Yep. I have, and they range from the ages of 11 to 21. I have four year old twins. I think going back to that, that little clip that we just saw, my conversation with my twins is very similar. Mm -hmm. If you see a gun in somebody's house, then don't touch it and go run and tell mom and dad. Is that really enough? You said that we need to start this conversation at age three. Well, the the Eddie Eagle program put on by the NRA, um, there's other programs out there by the National Shooting Sports Foundation, et cetera. Uh, they recommend that, you know, when you start teaching your kids about the stove being hot uh, or, you know, don't touch the knives, et cetera, that are on the counter, uh, that's usually around age three that we start teaching our kids about that stuff. Uh, so they can comprehend what it is that you're saying. So uh, that's when you should start telling them stop, don't touch leave the area, get an adult. Uh, in my house around age five, we started actually learning the firearm safety rules and seeing if they could memorize them. And what are they? Um, well, the NRA has three uh, and the industry sort of has five. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, treat all firearms as if they're loaded. Uh, so that extends out to Nerf guns, squirt guns, everything else. If you're a family that owns firearms, uh, even those other devices you have in a house that look like and act like something that shoots a projectile, you're gonna treat that like it's a loaded firearm. So you're not gonna point it at anybody, you're gonna be wearing safety glasses, you know, parents are gonna be present, that sort of thing. Uh, you're gonna keep it pointed in a safe direction. Uh, safe direction means where it's not gonna do any damage or harm to anybody else. Mm -hmm. You're gonna keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot, which means you're ready to shoot your intended target. It has to be something that you would positively identified. Uh, and then, um, those are the primary ones. The rest of them has to do is how you're gonna lock it up, secure it, et cetera. Right. What's interesting is, is that you were saying size and maturity are really key factors. Explain uh, that. So my kids were always raised around firearms. It's, it's been my line of work my entire life. Uh, I started shooting at the age of six. Uh, I joined the military, served a number of years. Um, I, I worked in the security industry for a while. Um, so I started teaching my kids, you know, when they were age six. And so they understood the, the awesome power of the firearms that we owned because we would take them out to the range and they would shoot them. Um, so it's very different with my kids, but I've got nieces and nephews who are the exact same age. And because I didn't have as much time with my nieces and nephews or their parents, uh, I chose not to, to teach them. I, you know, it's the parents' responsibility to reinforce what the kids are being taught. So if I couldn't get the parents to go with me to the range and train them first, I didn't want to instruct the kids because I wouldn't have them at home to reinforce my nieces and nephews. And it really starts with the parents. It does. It, like all things. I mean, if I think parents need to make that conscious decision of what's right for themselves and their home, whether it's for self-defense or for sport, et cetera. I know lots of people that own firearms, but they don't believe in using them for self-defense. So the firearms are always unloaded, locked in a safe, ammunition stored separately. But the majority of my friends, uh, firearms are loaded, ready to go, locked, where children still don't have access. And uh, Arizona is a really big state for firearm ownership. And so I just encourage everybody when they approach me about 
training their kids is I like to spend some time training the parents first. Um, you can't take the kids to the range and say, well, mom always lets me do this and dad always lets me do that. No, both parents have to be on the same page, both at home and when they're on the range with what the kids are going to be doing. It's interesting that you also offer a family education class too. So yeah, we have a basic uh, family fire and safety class, which is uh, generally about two hours long. And it's meant for the whole family, you know, husband, wife, and kids all together. And it's just to review the fire and safety rules with the kids. Uh, it allows the instructors to sort of examine the comprehension of the children and let the parents know what they, how, uh, what they think and feel. And uh, it's also to make sure that the parents are on the same page with uh, the general firearm safety rules. So it's just really an introduction. Uh, but we also do a youth uh, firearm class as well. And that, again, is, is relatively short. And it gives us an opportunity to teach the parents how to teach the kids on the range. So I've got a son and daughter who are uh, 13 and 11. And when they were much littler, my son I could take out to the range and he would go through 500 rounds in a few minutes. And we could easily spend the whole day, he'd want more ammunition and keep going. My daughter on the other hand, well she'll shoot the bullseye five times and say, yep, got it, I'm going home. Um, so I decided I would train them separately. I would take my son to the range and be all about him that day. So I wouldn't shoot for me, we would just shoot for him. When he was done, we'd go home. And the same thing for my daughter, because she doesn't want to be out there all day, you know, uh, being ignored with while I'm spending time with my son. So we make that trip separate. So it never gets old or worn out. They look forward to it. Uh, it's a positive learning experience. And that's what's really important for, for parents is to make sure that it's a positive learning experience, because that's what will really reinforce uh, the learning for the child. If it's a negative learning experience, then they tend to not want to do what we what we want them to. Right, right. And so I'm curious with this um, family education class. You said you can take the whole family. You can take the kids. Yep. How young can the kids be to go? Um, well, I, honestly, I'd like to see the kids be about you know five or six years old. I, I don't really want to make that decision for you. You have to decide for yourself. You know what is um, again? What are the what are your children capable of? Mm -hmm. um, you know some. Uh, some children are, are a, a lot more mature for their age than others, yeah. et cetera. So um, I, I leave that for the, to the, for the parents' discretion. That's one of the reasons why, by having them in the class, the instructors can sort of tell, you know, just how much of this is clicking. Yeah. You know, it's very interactive. And my instructors that I, I have for this have been training kids for a long time. And so they're typically throwing out candy and that sort of thing in class for rewards for right. answering questions correctly and stuff. So it's supposed to be a fun family experience and it's sort of to get your feet wet. Right. I gotta be honest with you, and, and maybe, you know, because I'm, I'm a little bit naive when it comes to my children, um, and, and I will tell you, my, my little guy, Zachary, has definitely, you know, he calls them shooters. Uh -huh. He likes to play around with, you know, the little toy guns and everything like that. But at six years old, Mm -hmm. to take your kids you, were you taking your kids out on the range at six so or? yes so wow at, by age five when they're starting to learn fire and safety rules before i ever took them to the range we did a lot of training at the house and so i believe it's really good to teach kids with rifles first and they make uh the firearm needs to fit the child so there's some some companies out there that make uh, much smaller bolt action single shot rifles because that gives you four points of contact, where like a pistol only gives you two points of contact. So it's, uh, that's how I learned it. It works really well. If you bench rest it, it gives you a fifth point of contact. So the child has a lot of control over it. Uh, so the, the, the firearm needs to fit whoever's using it. Now that doesn't matter if it's an adult or a child. And then going through the motions at the house, you know, setting up a target and using dummy rounds, which is inert training ammunition, so they can practice loading and unloading. It wasn't until they mastered all of those skills, the safety rules, and demonstrated they could safely case and uncase the firearm uh, before I ever took them to the range. So essentially, okay, when we so went you to the really range, really had them practice a lot. A lot. So, that. I mean, I literally, when I took them to the range for the very first time, I just stood behind them and, and watched, and they did all the processes and procedures. Now, once they got to where they were ready to load live ammunition, I sat down next to them, and your primary responsibility as an adult is to control the muzzle. They can make all the mistakes in the world they want with you controlling the muzzle to keep it down range because uh, that's where all the ammunition is going to go. Right. So if they get scared or frightened or nervous, uh, and that wasn't their first time to the range. Uh, I brought them to the range with me a few times first so they could get used to the noise, oh. a lot of the range commands, um, what everybody else was doing, and uh, it, it gave them an opportunity to see what that experience was like too. So they're not 
off put by the noise mm -hmm. uh, of whatever it else is. It can be really doing. scary. It is. And yeah. so that's where, like, I deal a lot with post traumatic stress or people who have been through uh, violent encounters. And so it's, it's real important that you set up the training environment to be as healthy for that individual. And firearms training is very individually based. It's a, it's a matter of figuring out what that individual person's needs are and then making sure that we make the class suited for that particular need. Uh, because we have military, law enforcement, private security, church security, et cetera. Um, so y y it's not one of those things where you can just give somebody a hammer and it works on every, on every screw. So okay. right tool for the right job. Oh, fascinating conversation. Um, and, and again, you just really want to just hone in on the message that it really starts with the parents. This education, it all starts at home and just talking to your kids. Well, yeah, the parents have to agree on everything, like, you know, which friends are you going to hang out with? Which food is right for you? What are you going to do if your friend offers you drugs? You know, the parents can't have different answers. Um, and the same thing goes for firearms. Uh, it's especially important that we treat your toy guns, your Nerf guns, squirt guns like live firearms, because if the kids are running around with their finger on the trigger all the time, and that's how they always pick it up, they may do the same thing with a live firearm. And, and if you, even if you don't believe in firearms, I think it's good for you to understand how they work, how they operate, what the firearm safety rules are, because that might help you identify someone who's supposed to be handling one versus someone who's not supposed to be handling one. Someone who knows how to handle one versus someone who doesn't know how to handle one. Because that'll heighten your awareness too if you're ever put in that situation. Uh, I know for a fact that my, my son, you know, when he sees someone handling a firearm, doesn't matter where we're at, the range, et cetera, He's very alert and oriented as to what's going on. Uh, one of the things I did with him when he was little was if we went to the range and he saw somebody do something that they weren't supposed to, is I would give him a dollar. So if I was busy shooting and even if he was sitting next to me, he's keeping an eye out on everybody else and he made a ton of money <laughs> off of these adults. Wow. But it made him very hyper observant. Right. So now if he goes to a friend's house and, and something were to happen, I know that he knows where to stand what uh, the difference between cover and concealment and with today's school shootings it's, yes. it's really important that children know um, how to react he comes home and talks about the drills they do at school and he's like dad they did it all wrong they need your help and i'm like <laughs> uh. I'll, I'll talk to them we'll yeah. get them we'll get them taken care of but i mean so those are the things that my, my son's like you know, they want us to do this but i'm, I'm going to do that i'm like good for you okay. so we have this all those conversations we, we've got to be involved oh that's so important well, David, thank you so much for being with us. It was very eye-opening. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us on Facebook Live. And you can catch the full story on kids and gun safety tonight in about a half an hour on 12 News at 10. Tonight. Only on 12 News at 10. Kids and guns. What happens when children find firearms in a room filled with toys? And there's guns. That's tonight at 10. From the Valley's number 119, 12 News.